Hi everyone, so today I'm going to show you how to create a 3D city using Element 3D. Here is kind of the style slash picture that I'm referencing. So it's going to be a kind of dark, very reflective theme for mine. And if you want to find your own reference pictures, I just searched up Tumblr city building for this one. And if you want some reference pictures to help you figure out the shapes of city buildings and stuff, I just searched up city building slash just city cartoon. So the first thing that we're going to do before getting on elements is making the walls of our buildings. So I'm just going to start by making a solid layer. And I'm just going to make mine dark blue, like very dark blue. Again, my reference picture is like very dark aesthetic, very reflective. So this is the wall of our building. Now we're going to add windows to it. So again, make a solid layer. If you want your scene to have more of a daytime look, then add a light blue like this to imitate the look of a sky. But if you want your scene to have more of a nighttime look, then you want to make some yellow, some white to imitate the look of light coming out of the windows. So I'm going to make mine light blue to have that daytime look. Now you want to drag this little red square on the side to make it more of a rectangle. Then just press S on your keyboard and decrease the scale just something like this then pre-compose this then go to effects and add motion tile now you want to scale down your composition like this then click mirror edges and just increase the output width and the output height until the whole thing is filled up if you want to change the spacing between the windows then just click back into the composition and just decrease the scale if you want to have more space around it or increase the scale if you want to have less space around it. Once you like the spacing of your windows, then just increase the scale of your composition. That way we don't have any half windows like these. So you want something just like this. Once you have this, you want to pre-compose the window layer. And we're going to add a square mask to this and we're just cutting off the bottom layers of windows. Whether you cut off one layer or two layers, that's your choice. This is just because, you know, obviously buildings don't have windows going from top to bottom all the way down. So we're just trying to imitate that look. Once you have something like this, you want to duplicate the solid layer that's underneath your window. Then you want to select the window and one of the solids and pre-compose those. And now you should have one composition with the windows and one without it. We're going to use this blank solid layer for like the roof and like the sides where we don't want windows. Now create another solid layer and the color doesn't matter for this one and add element to it. Then go to custom layers, custom texture maps and for layer one just add your solid layer and for layer two add the composition with the window. Now open the scene setup. And I'm just going to start with a small rectangular building. So first I'm going to create a cube. To make this wider, go to size XYZ and increase the first value. To change the height, just increase or decrease the middle value. And to change the thickness, just increase or decrease the last value. Once you have your shape, just extend the box model and select the little circle. Then here where it says diffuse, none set, click this arrow and select the layer with the windows. If your picture doesn't show up, then try one of these solutions that have worked for other people. I'll also link the post in the description in case anyone wants to add any more solutions. Once you have your picture, just press OK. Then go back to the box model and select this checkerboard. And this is where we can edit the appearance of the windows. So the first value on UV repeat will stretch it horizontally while the second value stretches it vertically. And for UV offset, the first value moves it horizontally and the second one moves it vertically. So just use those tools to edit your windows if you need it. To increase the reflection, go back to where the circle is and select this first sphere and just scroll down until you find reflectivity and just increase the intensity. Then here on the left, select presets, and if you don't have these folders, there is a link in the description to download them. Select environment and select either of these folders. You can scroll through these and figure out which one of these you want to be reflected on your city. So for example, if you want more of a nighttime look, you can use the underpass one. So just double click it and you can see mine got a lot darker. If you want more of a daytime look, then use town. 
Once you're happy with the reflection on your building, duplicate the box model by pressing Command D or Control D on your keyboard. And we're going to use this to add a roof on our building so that the roof doesn't have windows like this. So to do that, go to this little wrench and you want to decrease this middle value all the way down to zero. Then you want to just drag up the Y arrow until you see it come up. Extend the box model and here where the little circle is, you want to right click that and select duplicate and replace. Now go to the little picture here, and here where it says diffuse custom layer 2, select that, and you want to change it to the layer without the windows. Once you have that, just drag it down again until it covers up the roof like this. Now let's say you don't want windows on every side of your building, like let's say I want to cover up this back part. What we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the original box again. This time since we're going to cover up the back, you want to decrease this last value all the way down to zero. Then drag the Z arrow until it comes out like this. Then here at the scene materials, you want to select the material that has no windows and just drag it to the box model that's highlighted. Then just drag back the wall by pushing the Z arrow again. If you don't want windows on the side of your building and you just want it on the front, duplicate the original box model again. This time you want to decrease the first size value all the way down to zero and just drag the X arrow until it comes out, doesn't matter which side you pull it to. And again, just drag the material without the windows, drag it to the box model, then push it against the building. Then to block off the other side, just duplicate the box model on the side. Then just drag the X arrow until it blocks up the other side too. Now that we're done with our building, you want to click this little folder and hold shift on your keyboard and select each of the box models and deselect the group folder. And you want to just drag it to the group folder until there's a little outline on, around the group folder, not just a line like this. You want to have an outline around it. If you want to rename the group folder, just right click and click rename. That way we can stay organized and we won't have a bunch of box models just laying out when we add more buildings. So now that we're done with that, I'm just going to hide this building so that we can add another one. This time I'm going to make a tall skinny building. And again, I'm just going to start by creating a cube, but you want to make sure that you click the group folder and that it's highlighted before you create another shape. Now to increase the height, just increase the middle value here. If you want to use the same windows and the same wall as we did for the first building, then just select the material with the windows and drag it to the box model. And again, if it's all stretched out weird, just go to the checkerboard and play with the UV repeats and UV offsets. To create the roof, I'm just going to duplicate the box model, go to the wrench and decrease the middle value all the way to zero, move it up and add the plain wall to that box model and drag it back down to cover up the top and just throw these into a folder again. If you want to create another set of walls and add different colors this time, press OK to get out of elements for now. And just repeat what we did earlier. So create another solid layer. And I'm going to make mine darker this time. And if you want to have the same style of windows, just different colors, then what you can do is go into the pre-composition with the windows and select the composition with the windows and just click Command C or Control C. Go back into our main composition and press Command V or Control C to paste it. Then to change the color, just go to Effects and find Tint and just add that to the windows. Then just select either of these colors and just change it to whatever color you want your windows to be. Then for the color that you didn't change, select the little ink dropper next to it and just select the other little color thing like this. Then doing what we did earlier, just duplicate the solid layer behind the windows and select that layer along with the window layer and pre-compose those. Then go back to your element layer and add those to the custom texture maps. Now to add this to our building, just go back to scene setup and just do what we did earlier. Just extend the box model, select the little circle here, click the diffuse and add the new wall with the windows. Scroll down to find the reflectivity and increase it if you want to. Then just go back to the box model and play with the UV repeat and UV offset if you need to fix it. And then to add the roof, same process as earlier, 
just duplicate the box model, decrease the second size value to zero and drag it up. Extend the box model and right click the material and click duplicate and replace. Then change the diffuse to the new solid layer. Then just drag it back down. If you want to add that kind of block on the top of your building, then just duplicate the box model that we use for the roof. And you want to increase the middle value a little bit. Then go to these arrows and just decrease the size. If you want to add that kind of like pokey thing like on skyscrapers, then just duplicate that box model again. And you want to decrease the first size value to about 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And same thing for the last size value. Just make sure that they're the same numbers and just increase the middle value to make it longer. And once you're happy with that building, just throw those onto a folder again. For this last building, we'll do a different type of shape, not just like a rectangular kind. So make sure that you're on the main group folder and press create and select the cylinder. And if you want, you can just keep it a cylinder like this if you want a round building. Or you can decrease these sides here. And as you can see, the lower numbers give us more interesting shapes. I'm just going to keep mine a hexagon and I'm just going to increase the height. And to make this wider, just increase the radius and you want to check off no smoothing here. For the windows and the wall of this one, I'm going to make something a little different. So just close out of element again. And I'm just going to create another solid layer. Again, this is just the wall that's behind the windows. Then create another solid layer for my windows. This time I'm going to drag the top square here to make it more of a wide rectangle like this. And basically how this wall is going to look is on each side of our building, there is just a wide window stretching from one end to another. So again, you wanna pre-compose this window layer. And for this one, I'm just going to duplicate the solid window layer and just change the position instead of adding motion tile. And once you've got your windows, again, just duplicate the solid layer beneath the windows and select the new duplicate as well as the window layers and pre-compose those. Go back to the elements layer and add those to the custom layers. Then go back to the scene setup, then just add the new walls the same way that we've been doing for the previous buildings. For this one to decrease the height, just go to the wrench and decrease the height to 0 0.001. It won't let you go down to zero, but that's fine. And from there, it's the same process of adding the roof. And again, just put those into a group folder. Now I'm actually going to put the city together and you can create more building styles if you want. I'm just going to be duplicating the buildings I already have if I need more buildings. And to finally lay out our city, I'm just going to unhide all of these buildings and select the main group folder, then press create and select this little plane. Then select these arrows and just increase the scale. I'm just going to start with this first building here, select that folder and drag it up. Then just use the arrows to move it around the plane and you have the scale if your building is too small or too big. To rotate the building, go to orientation and change the middle value and just do that for all of your buildings. So this is how I've laid out my city. I've made just enough so that I can insert my person here and have enough buildings behind it. Now obviously we don't just want a plain floor, so go to the plane model and select the material. Then go to the diffuse and for this one I'm just going to load it from my file, so select load texture. And I just searched up black road texture to find this picture. If you want your own picture then just search up like pavement texture, sidewalk texture, so on. Once you have your road you don't want it to have a reflection obviously, so go to this first circle here. And just decrease the environment multiplier all the way to zero and that should get rid of the reflection. Now the last thing that we need to add to our city is of course the mask of our person. So exit out of element and you can just drag the element layer to the top of your timeline and hide everything else for now. And it looks a little weird, you can't see the ground but don't worry about that for now. Just import the picture of your person that you want to use and pre-compose it. Then just create a mask around them. Once you have your mask, go back to your element layer, open up the custom layers and add it for the custom text and mask as well as the custom texture maps. 
Then go back to the scene setup and again make sure that you're selecting the main group folder. Then click extrude and you should see the mask pop up. And to decrease the size just go to these arrows and decrease the scale and just position it. Then extend the extrusion model. Then to add your picture, just select the picture here. And same thing as earlier, just click diffuse and select the picture of your person. If your picture looks weird like this where it's not centered, then go to the extrusion model, click the checkerboard and change the texture mapping to UV. And now we are done modeling our city and our person. Now we can close out of element and to zoom into our person, just open up the world transform and just increase the world scale. Then here where it says world position xy just increase the second value and now you should be able to see your floor and of course if you need to rotate it just extend the world rotation and use the y rotation now to add our camera movement of course create a camera layer i like using the 50 millimeter preset and create a null layer and just link the camera layer to the null and make the null layer a 3d layer you want to position your element layer so that your person is right in the middle. Now for the null, click R on your keyboard and just keyframe all of the rotations. Then select P and separate the dimensions. Then keyframe all of those. Then just press U to see all of the keyframes and easy ease all of these. We might not change all of these settings, but that's fine. I just prefer having all of them laid out like this so I don't have to keep switching from the position, then back to the rotation, then back to the position, and so on. So for the null, in the very beginning, I'm going to increase the Y rotation so that our person is tilted kind of like this. Then I'm just decreasing the Z position to move our person back to the center. And to move kind of closer to our person, just increase the X position. Just play with the rotations, play with the positions until you get something like this. Now at the end of my clip, I'm going to decrease my Y rotation so that it flips to the opposite angle. This time you want to decrease your X position and you might even have to decrease your Z position a bit. Now turn on motion blur and add it to your elements layer. We're going to add the same graph to all of our keyframes, just copy my graph. We have two last things that we need to add to this. One is a light layer. You can add a parallel light and that basically adds light to everything. Or you can add a spotlight which of course just lights up part of your scene. To move the spotlight just move your mouse towards the arrows until it says Z like this. Then hold it and drag it to the right to push the light away. And to point your light towards your person just drag this little thing to them like that and the very last thing that we need to add to this is a sky behind our city i just found this picture on google i just searched up sky clouds you want to increase the scale so that it fits your composition like this then just drag it below your elements layer and now that we have our sky that is all you need to do for this transition